while in prayer, the Holy Spirit of God has been flowing in such a mighty way. Now, very early this morning, the Holy Spirit of God spoke to me, and I would like to share with you what the Holy Spirit of God revealed to me, and it is amazing revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit of God spoke to me, and he said to me this early this morning, he said, the old serpent is an ancient being. He has always have been. Even though he is created by God, he is eternal being. He cannot die. They are immortal. And I said, that's true. He said, so wisdom comes from knowledge, from being old, being an ancient of days. And I said, well, Christ is an ancient of days in Daniel 7 and 9 in Revelation 1 and 14. Like Adam, he was crowned with glory and honor. Proverbs 16, 31, the crown is the white hair showing him to be an ancient of days. See, I'm establishing the word with the Holy Spirit of God as he is talking with me. I said, I definitely can establish that in the word of God. <clears throat> he said, what did the devil desire? I said, the devil desired something. He said, he desired knowledge. Jesus said to be wise as serpents. So serpents are wise. Did not the serpent say to the woman in Genesis 3 that the tree of knowledge of good and evil was a tree to make one wise? But the devil does not possess this knowledge. I said, he doesn't have that knowledge of that tree? No. He does not have knowledge. He said the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He said Deuteronomy tells you that God has set before you this day life and death. So the tree of good and evil is a tree of knowledge of life and death. The devil has knowledge of life. He's an eternal being. He does not have knowledge of death. The Holy Spirit of God says, Remember that I said to you many years ago, if the devil wanted to change Bible prophecy, he would stop and do nothing else. He said, you know that he is the God of this world in 2 Corinthians 4 and 4. Adam was an ancient of days and he was crowned with glory and honor. Now, God put Adam in a deep sleep in Genesis 2, 21 through 23. The Holy Spirit of God spoke to me and he said, why did God feel the need to put Adam in a deep sleep. I said, well, Romans tells us that he was under the spirit of slumber, that he could not understand. He said, why did God not want him to have understanding? Adam had free will to eat of all the trees in the garden. He ate the word of God like the prophets uh, after him. He ate the words of God. And I said, that's right. He lived by the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The Holy Spirit said, this is true. See, I talk to the Holy Spirit like I talk to you, and he talks back because I just love him so much. He said, so what did the devil desire? He desired that knowledge. I said, well, if he has knowledge of life, why does he want knowledge of death? Because he has the spirit of suicide. An eternal being, an immortal, that cannot die. Remember, God created everything, and everything is upheld by the word of God. And I said, that is correct. He said, so the devil is connected to God, whether he wanted to be or not. Being connected to God, he is caught within the loop of time. He is caught within the circuit of God, because the spirit of God travels a circuit. So those that rebelled against God, become lawlessness that brought forth war, rebellion. They became lawlessness because they could not die. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, if you have no fear of death, then you do not fear God. But everything has an appointed time. Everything has its own season. And I said, yes, my Lord, I agree with you 100%. That is true. It is in the word of God. Everything has its appointed time, even death. Once appointed a man is to die, and after this is the judgment. Everything has an appointed time. He said, so Adam has a key. The key of knowledge, the key of 
hell, the key of death. But without the understanding of the power of the knowledge of that key, the key is useless. So the devil took the key from Adam, and the key is even useless to the devil because the devil does not possess that knowledge. He believed if he could cause man to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, of life and death, then man would have the knowledge of death. And I said, wait a minute, my Lord. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15 tells us that the devil has power over death. The Holy Spirit said, indeed he does, but that is Romans 8 and 2. He, that is the law of sin and death. He may have power of sin that brought forth death, but still the worm never dies. I said, why would the devil want knowledge of death? He says, now remember this. The woman said it is a tree to be desired to make one wise. He said, does not Revelation 9 and 6 say that they desire to die, but death will flee from them? I said, that's what it says. I said, why would they, the immortals, desire to die? They desired to die because if the devil could kill himself, he would not be caught within the loop of time. And in the book of Revelation 20 and 10, uh, a place of torment, they wanted to die. They have never died, only one that has tasted death. And I said, that's right, my Lord. Jesus is the one that tasted death because in Genesis, God said after Adam sinned, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. And the Holy Spirit said to me, which one of them of the Trinity had the knowledge of death? And that would be the last Adam. 1 Corinthians 15 and 45, Jesus Christ is the last Adam. He would have the knowledge that would taste death and would know death. But yet, even though his body died, his soul and his spirit cannot die. An immortal cannot die. That's what caused the fallen ones to rebel against God, to become lawlessness, because they had no fear of death. They cannot be killed. The devil has the spirit of suicide. He wanted to end his existence within this world. I told the Holy Spirit all this time, I believe he was trying to add to his life, to his days. The Holy Spirit says no. He wanted to end his life. He wanted to cease to exist. When they came to the earth, the earth was at night. It was at darkness. They believed that that was the type of death that they could rest in, being separated from God. But then the light shined in the world, and that light you know is everlasting life. God was letting them know that you cannot separate yourself from God no matter how much you want to. You have a desire to die. Uh, there is no escape from death. The prophet, the psalmist said, if I go into the highest heaven, God is there. If I go into the lowest places of hell, God is there. They wanted to uh, exist without God. They wanted to not be caught up within that. They wanted to know what it was like to die. That's what I'm trying to say. They wanted to know what it was like to die, to taste death, to end their eternal life. And that certainly gave me something to think about. And the reason why God put Adam in a deep sleep so Adam would not have the knowledge, the understanding of what he ate that day, him and his wife. Because if he would have had that knowledge, he could have gave that knowledge to the devil. And then the devil having the key to hell and death, then he could have had both and he would have been able to kill immortal beings, those that are eternal. God could not give him that type of knowledge, the knowledge of life and the knowledge of death. Because John 8 and 44, Jesus said the devil was a murderer from the beginning. He only had the key of knowledge to kill through sin and death. He did not possess the knowledge to kill an immortal, an eternal being. And that's what the knowledge that he wanted. And he believed that if Adam and his wife ate of that tree, he would not only take the key of hell and death from them, but he would have the knowledge of that tree. Because Revelation 9 and 6 says, They'll desire death, and death will flee from them. 
And in Genesis, it tells us that the tree was a tree to be desired. It was a tree to make one wise. Jesus said that the serpent be wise as the serpent. But the serpent did not possess all knowledge because that was knowledge that was in that garden that he did not possess. And that was the knowledge of that tree, the knowledge of good and evil, the knowledge of life and death. He wanted the knowledge of how to kill an immortal being. Oh, that's amazing. The Holy Spirit's been moving so much while I've been in prayer. I've got so much to tell you. I got so much to tell you, but I'd like to share this uh, quick vision with you. And in this vision, I am standing before a mountain, a white mountain, and I can see words of God written outside and inside. And I stood there and I watched a stone being cut out of the mountain. And the Holy Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, do you know the meaning of the cutting of this stone? And I said, no, my Lord. I do not know the meaning of the cutting out of the stone out of the mountain. What does this mean, my Lord? He said, this is the law of God. This is the law of the prophets and the law of Jesus Christ. And in the vision, I looked at my own self. And many times in a vision, I try to look at myself and I'm, able, I'm not able to see myself. But in this vision, I saw myself standing before that mountain. And before the stone that was cut out of the mountain, the laws of God. And when I looked at myself, I appeared to be a white stone with the words of God written all over me. Even down to the soles of my feet were the written words of God. And I said, Lord, should I be here? He said, I brought you here to see that Adam was worthy to open the books, the books of knowledge to make one wise. After his fall, he was no longer found worthy. No man in heaven or on earth was found worthy to even look upon the books of knowledge, the books of wisdom, of secrets that have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. I have brought you here to reveal these things to you. Because God has found you worthy. And I said, my Lord, who am I? I am certainly not no one. I am nothing. I'm just a little woman in the earth. I'm not no one, my Lord, that you should bring me here to reveal such amazing, amazing things to me. And I looked at the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. And upon the new city, outside and inside was the written words of God. The stone, the written words of God, the laws of God, the laws of the prophets, and the law of Jesus Christ. God is powerful, church. You just don't know how powerful he is, and I have so much to share with you. But I am still in prayer, praying and interceding for the church and against what is coming. Keep me in your prayers, church, and know that I love you dearly and i thank god for each and every one of you have a blessed and victorious day today my dear precious friends in jesus christ most holy name we pray and let the church say amen and amen